am very, very excited for what um, God is bringing to us today. Um, the title of what I am sharing is Life Manifested, Step Into the Life That You Were Meant to Live. Um, all of this comes out of this, I would say more specifically, this last year, 2013. Um, I don't know if you guys remember uh, the beginning of the year of 2013. I uh, went through kind of a valley, that's what I call it, where nothing physically happened. Like there was no, I mean I had issues and ongoing things, but nothing changed. God just kind of arrested me and took me into this valley and was showing me things about myself. And I was just like, what is happening? I don't even understand, but I hear you. Okay, let me work on this. Let me pray. And I was spending a lot of alone time with the Lord trying to figure out what this is. Um, I do have a better idea of it now, but that kind of kick-started a whole process that is continuing um, but I, uh, God asked me to share uh, last week, he asked me to share what it is that I have thus far. So this is not extensive, but this is what the portion. So what would happen if you actually did what you believe? Amen. What would happen if you actually did what you believe? The reality is your life as of now is a result of what you actually believe. But we say we believe in something else. But we do something else. So you actually are doing what you believe. And when you look around and you ask God, change my life, he says, well, you are doing what you believe in. Mm -hmm. You have what you believe in. Okay. So, this doesn't want to work, so I'm going to need a PowerPoint person back there flipping me. Can't do that. I'm recording. <laughs> Don't record the screen. Record the video. <laughs> <laughs> I was recording the, you know, the when you change it. Okay. Try just clicking. I see it. I see it. Oh. Look at the screen up here. You changed it. Slideshow. There we are. I can't see all that. Over here. Right there. And then you see the first icon where it says from current slide. That works. I can't see that one. one. Go ahead. Click it. Yeah. And then try just pushing the right arrow. Right arrow. Right far. I see right arrow. On the keyboard. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> okay. Okay. What? Sorry. No problem. So, um, oh, all the distraction. Um, so what God was showing me is that we need to tap, um, one of the concepts that um, God was bringing out is latent potential. Okay? This bug is maybe a thousand times smaller than us, mm -mm. and doesn't, he won't kill us. So we're going to focus on, it's just a roach, we're going to focus on what God is bringing to us right now and not a roach. Amen? Amen. Okay. So latent potential. What is the definition of latent? So here are just the first, I think, five or six definitions off of Google. Um, so present or potential, but not evident or active. Okay. It's okay, it's over by me, we're good. Present, but not visible. Apparent or actualized. Okay, existing as potential. Another definition is, um, it's towards the bottom. Present or potential, but not evident or active. Something present, but not, but invisible or hidden. The reality is that we have latent potential 
and it is not only physical, but it's also spiritual. Yeah. So here's an example of latent potential. Okay, in track, when the runners are in the starting block, all right, take a look at the muscles. Okay, you can't see it as clearly as I could when I put it on there. <clears throat> but all the muscles from previous training, they are ready to go. Yeah. They're not going, but they're ready. Mm -hmm. Latent potential, not actualized, okay? Same thing with the swimmer. And one of the things, I used to do shot put and discus in high school. I know I don't look like a big, you know, linebacker person, but I did for two years. Had a, got a varsity letter because there was no other varsity people. <laughs> but, <laughs> so they kind of bumped me up and I got a letter. But I was not even all that good. But one of the things I want to highlight is you see how this swimmer, and also when you're running, they crouch down. Why? Because it increases the ability to explode when they're ready to go. Okay? If you're open, then you don't have as much potential to move than if you kind of ball it up and then explode from there. Okay? Same thing with shot put and discus. That's what I learned. It's about the extent of what I've learned. That was very good. Here's another example. A match. Latent potential, okay? Mm -hmm. Good example. Looking at the match, at the head of it, I don't know what it is. <laughs> that's at the head of the match, that's red, okay? But it has the potential to light a fire, mm -hmm. okay? But towards, as you go down from the tip, the potential to light a fire has gone away. Why? Because it's just wood, mm -hmm. all right? You need something else. So the, the potential is right at the head, all right? And what you need in order to actualize that potential is the box. Why? Because it has that strip. Mm -hmm. And when you strike the match, then potential is actualized, is realized, mm -hmm. okay? Fine. This is the same for you and I. We have latent potential. We can do things, there's a lot of things that I know that you think, okay, I can do this, I can do that, I have talents, I have abilities and skills, okay? And that is your physical latent potential, okay? Your physical potential to do things. But the reality is, is that you have spiritual latent potential as well, Amen. okay? Mm -hmm. And so if you think of the match as your physical latent potential and then the box, as your spiritual. The, the box provides the directions for what you need to do. The box is what you need to interact with in order to make the physical potential actualized, okay? Mm -hmm. So once you actually strike the match against the box, that's when the physical and the spiritual come together and everything is ignited inside of you, okay? Spiritual latent potential is what you're doing right now. Mm -hmm. Sitting, here. Sitting in church. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But to some, this is, this is it. The moment, yeah. This is, this, is the, this is the time. Like, I'm spiritually ignited right now. Why? Because I walked through doors and sat in a chair and listened to someone talk. Because mm -hmm. typically that's the extent that, that we say, oh, my spiritual potential is actualized now. I've gone to church. I've done the thing that I'm supposed to do to uh, ignite me spiritually. Okay, but I couldn't get the, the link to work, but that last link is a picture of us at church. <laughs> okay, so it's just being in church. It's um, asking someone else to pray for us. It's uh, going to Bible study. And being like, yeah, that's really good. Yeah. Saying that you'll pray for someone and never actually pray. Mm -hmm. You know, that's your spiritual latent potential. That's when the Bible says that you're fat off the word. Mm -hmm. Right, that's right. That's good you're just eating and eating and eating and so fat and gluttonous and... Right. 
Ain't never working it out. Ain't never bringing it together and letting God work it out. Right? Because that's what, that's what being fat is. It's just taking in calories, but you never expend them. You never work it out of your body. So it just sits there. That's what that means. And so until you actually do a sit-up, get up to turn the TV, in your house. I mean, it doesn't have to be actually working out. It's just physical activity, right. activity, mm -hmm. activity. Mm -hmm. Then you never work out those calories. Mm -hmm. And that's what we actually do most of the time. That's what I was doing. And I did not, I, I couldn't see that's what I was doing. Okay, because I believed, I don't want to go too far ahead. I believed that I could I could do it, I could change my life, and I found out that I couldn't. And I'll explain that later. So how do you actualize your potential? How do you actually make a change? You have to do, you have to take the match. I mean, we could sit and look at a match and be like, turn into fire, turn into fire, all we want to. But right. until we take the match and strike it against the box, nothing's going to happen. Right. Mm -hmm. It is in the process. So think about all the steps it takes to pick up a match and strike it against the box. The most activity that happens is inside of your mind. We look at the physical striking and being like, oh, that's what I need to do. But the reality is, is that just to physically do that, there are thousands of neural connections and firing in your brain that you decide to do. Not only just a decision, but it fires your muscles. Mm -hmm. it, it regulates how far mm -hmm. that you need to go, how hard you have to press on the box. There's way thousands more actions happening inside of your mind than physically being able to see. It might be hundreds of thousands, but I know it's at least thousands. Mm -hmm. okay? And that's what it's like in the spiritual world. That's what it's like in the kingdom. Mm -hmm. is that there are thousands, there's way more activity happening in this spiritual realm yeah. that's activated right. by right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. our mind and what it perceives and where it's looking. Right. Okay? So if you turn to Ephesians 4, 17, 25. 4, 17, and then we're going to look at 25. Um, in <coughs> it is up here. I don't know why you're sitting without a Bible. Okay, so it says, Now this I say and testify in the Lord, that you must no longer walk, as the Gentiles do in the futility of their minds. They are darkened in their understanding, alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them, due to their hardness of heart. I'm going to read it through and come back. They have become callous and have given themselves up to sensuality, greedy to practice every kind of impurity. But that is not the way you learned Christ. Okay, this is ESV. This is the English, sta English Standard Version. Okay, which you guys all know this very well. We've gone over it a lot. Assuming that you have heard about him and were taught in him as the truth is in Jesus. To put off your old self, which belongs to your former manner of life and is corrupt through deceitful desires. And to be renewed in the spirit of your minds. And to put on the new self created after the likeness of God in true righteousness and holiness. Two things I want to point out. There's a third, but I'll point that out later. Two things I want to point out. The root of our mind changing is our heart. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay? Amen. The root of our mind changing is our heart. Mm -hmm. Okay? Sounds good, but how do I know this? Because if you look in verse 18, it says all these things about the mind, and it says due to their hardness of heart. 
So you don't like your life? Well, your heart does. <laughs> That's what you got. Mm, because good. of your heart. That's good. Okay? And then later on it says, in verse 22, which belongs to the former manner of life and is corrupt through deceitful desires. These things are through deceitful desires. Okay? So the reality is we talk about changing your mind, change your mind, change your mind. Your mind will never change. Your perspective, the way that you look at things, none of it will change until your heart changes. Mm -hmm. Will you say, well, I, I really want, nobody said about want. Your heart changes. There's a transformation of heart. There's a, a desire at the pit of your soul transferring to your spirit that that desires God. It's not deceitful. It doesn't say, I want, because we, the want is so deceitful, because we say we want it, mm -hmm. we say we believe it, mm -hmm. but our actions do not, right. Line up. they're not congruent, mm -hmm. <laughs> okay? They're not congruent. They do not follow in the same path. Okay, so it's deceitful desires. We say, well, I want God. Liar. You're lying. You're lying to yourself. You're lying to yourself. Because I can tell just by looking at the decisions that you're making or decisions you're not making. Right, that's true. Mm -hmm. That is what whatever is in you is what comes out of you. That's true. That's what it says in the word. It says, uh, hope deferred makes the heart sick. I love this. This is from, um, I got this off of, uh, from the Dave Ramsey class, actually. <laughs> but a desire fulfilled is a tree of life. The reality is that we have to get desperate. Amen. We have to get desperate. Yeah, we have to get desperate. I I realized that there were a lot of things in my life uh, I just did not like. I knew that God wanted something different. I knew that the way that things were in my life was not what God wanted. He was not pleased with it. Um, not that I wasn't blessed. I was blessed up and down and everywhere I looked. I just knew that there was a will of God that was not being manifested. There was a life of mine that was not being manifested. And I did not know exactly how I was going to get from here to there. But one day I got desperate. One day I changed my mind because I could, I, my heart was changed. And I was just like, what is it that's, that's stopping me from moving forward? My mind changed, and then I got desperate to where I could see. God was giving me visions, and I could see my life, literally see myself speaking, see myself going overseas, see myself doing things. And it became incongruent with my life now. I, I couldn't bridge the two, so I got desperate. And that was most of you were here in the night of the solemn assembly. It all culminated where, bam, I could not do it anymore. I said, I'm going on a year fast from TV. And that was my physical manifestation of the decision I had made because my heart changed. Okay? And I got desperate. And I said, I don't care what has to happen. I mean, I literally said that. <laughs> didn't know the next week my husband was going to leave. Uh, didn't know that my whole entire life was about to change. I didn't know that that was coming up. I might have changed my mind. <laughs> if we know it's coming, we get scared. And I desperately want to do whatever God has for me. So looking at this scripture, 
desire fulfilled is the tree of life. And I'm like, tree of life? I mean, you know, I get it, but I don't get it. You know, it's like that deceitful desires, you know, like, oh, yeah, I get it. You're lying. You don't really get it. So I looked it up. You're lying. <laughs> I looked it up. So it's Genesis 2, 9. So the Lord made all kinds of trees grow out of the ground. Trees that were pleasing to the eye and good for food in the middle of the garden were the tree of life and the tree of knowledge and evil. Okay, without going into the whole thing, you know, Adam and Eve, Eve ate from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Right. So did Adam. So here's what God says about that. He says, and the Lord said, the man has now become like one of us, knowing good and evil. He must not be allowed to reach out his hand and take also from the tree of life and eat and live forever. Okay, focus on the and eat and live forever. Because that's what made me realize, okay, now I know what the tree of life is. Mm -hmm. Once you eat of it, you live forever. Mm -hmm. Okay? So putting that back in there, but a desire fulfilled is a tree of life. Living forever. Pause on that. Keep that in your mind. So this was from Hebrews 11.39. Um, let me give backstory because I didn't add it in here because it would have been too much. If you go from the beginning of Hebrew 11, Hebrews 11, there's all kinds, of, I mean, a huge long list. And even in there he says, I, I don't have time to go through all the other people. Like, let me just give you a few examples. And he lists all these people from Abraham and Moses and all these people in the Old Testament who basically, in a nutshell, they aren't Christians. I mean, a lot of them weren't even Jews. <laughs> all they did, the thing, that, the thing that allowed them to get, like, so close to God, and walk, it's just that they obeyed God. They had faith. In God, okay? So that's what this whole um, chapter is about, right? Most of it, he's just talking about these men who faith was given to them. They had faith. It mattered. It, that, that was their connection to the Lord. That was it. They didn't follow, you know, <laughs> and have Bible and all this stuff. They just had faith in God and followed and did what he said, all right? So Hebrews 11, 39 says, and all these, talking about all these people, Though commended through their faith, we give them, God says, awesome, thumbs up, gold star for you, bam, okay? Mm -hmm. You're commended through your faith, did not receive what was promised. Right. Since mm -hmm. God had provided something better for us, that apart from us, they should not be made perfect. Okay. The first time I read this, huh? It's amazing, I just, something just hit me with the first time I read this, I know something hit me the second time I read it. The first time I read this, I thought that it was saying that God was going to, um, that we were going to get to our promise. Right? Mm -hmm. The first time I read it, it says, since God has provided something better for us, that apart from us, they should not be made perfect. So I thought it was talking about that we were going to, apart from us, so we, they didn't get their promise. So I connected the apart from us to the thing above, yeah. that they did not receive what was promised. Mm -hmm. Okay? Something was like, this is not fitting, Lord, what are you saying? What are you, what are you talking about? Like, okay. I read it again, and it said, I connected it to the thing after. <laughs> that apart from us, they should not be made perfect. Exactly. Right. Okay? That means they don't get it without us. That means <laughs> that Christ, we have Christ. Right. We have Christ. So they didn't. Right. So apart from us, Okay? Without what we have, without, without this reality of perfection, they don't have perfection. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. 
So he's highlighting that God has made us perfect through Christ. Okay, we have something they didn't have. God blessed them, and God was happy, and gold stars and everything. They did great. They had faith. But God has provided something better for us. Okay? We are in Christ. That is what's better. Okay? We are in Christ. I'm about to bring it together. Okay? So remember I said we're going to go Ephesians 4, 17, 25. This is change your mind. It starts from the heart and then our mind changes. There's so much in the Bible about that. Okay, so when we go to verse 25, apologize, there he says, the next thing he says after all those things is, therefore we put away falsehood. Amen. We put away falsehood. Okay? He's highlighting that the stuff that we see and the stuff that we think that is real isn't really real. Okay? We put away falsehood. The stuff that we think is real isn't really real. The, the, let me give an example. Jeez, the example that I have, I really don't want to give. Um, <laughs> okay. Um, there were a lot of things in my marriage that I thought were real. Um, a lot of things that were said that I made decisions about as if they were real. Because I didn't know what God was saying about those things. I didn't have a, a, a reality of what was happening in the spirit. I, I knew that I needed one, but I didn't really know what was really real. So I dealt with things coming up in my marriage as if those things were real. If something came up and said, you need to be over there, okay, then I need to be over here. Because that was real to me. I need to be over here. Okay, that was real, so I moved. He said, oh, no, you need to be over there. Okay, so I'll be over here, okay? Because that was real, because you said it, and I came over here. I didn't know that when something physically came and said to be over here, that what was real was I needed to just stay right here. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. What's really real, what God is saying is you need to stay right here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Then I would get over here. And I'll be like, God, 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 help me over here. Lord, help me. He said, why are you over there? Your reality is over there. Okay, well, then I'll come over here. Okay, but then the physical realm said, why are you over here? You're supposed to be over there. War between the spirit. War between the spirit. The reality is, is that you're listening to falsehood. Mm -hmm. And you're going... From here to there to everywhere else yeah. than where God said to be, right. which is stand right here, mm. which is stand and know that I am God. Right. That's what I did for a long time. Then God took me through a valley. <laughs> I said, what do you want from me, God? Really, like, for real, I haven't done anything. I mean, I'm doing what the... I'm moving and I'm shaking and I'm doing everything that I can do. 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 Right, exactly. I'm doing everything that I can do. Right. I'm doing everything that I can do. Because <laughs> I can do a lot of stuff. There's a whole library of stuff. I can go to the library and read up. I can Google stuff and read up. Because I'm motivated. I make stuff happen. That's, that's me. I could do it. Anything that I want to do, I can do it. Because I decide that I want to do it. And God said, when are you going to decide to do what I want you to do? Hmm. And there was a moment where my internal desire, my heart changed. 
and I decided that I was no longer going to do anything that I wanted to do. That all the prayers of, my life is in my own. <laughs> I remember it was years ago. I said, God, why is this thing happening? Whatever he said. I said, what did I say? I said, you know, I don't want to do whatever it was. He said, I thought you didn't have a life. Yeah. I said, oh, that's what that means. <laughs> Because I've said it so many times in prayer. My heart said, I don't have a life, Lord. I live the life you give me. I don't have a life. Yeah. Oh, I used to pray it all the time. <laughs> the innocent, naive desire for God. Right, right. It was a heart position. And I had no idea what it meant. So as, this, as I'm going through this process and going through this valley and God is showing me all this stuff, well, why is he showing me like all kinds of stuff? Like, really? Like one of the things, it's funny, one of the things that uh, um, I wrote all these post-it notes, because part of the valley was, I don't know if you guys remember, we all went through corporately a um, kill the root fast, yeah, right? 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 So what I did was I, I wrote on one thing on each post-it note, Right, yellow post-it notes so I could see them. What God showed me, what was going on with me. I mean, there was all kinds of stuff. Kind of reminds me of what you were saying about all the stuff that God was showing you, Cynthia. Mm -hmm. um, vindictiveness, unforgiveness, like all this stuff. I'm like, Lord, I'm not those things. Right? Mm -hmm. right? You know? Like, really? Where is that? So he started to show me all of these things. Um, and what he showed, part of what he was showing me was that we need to be in Christ. Okay. This is where my desire turned to because I had, I had a lot of desires. I had desires for my career and desires for my marriage and desires for children and desires for like all kinds of stuff. And I had a, a very innocent and naive desire for God, but I didn't know what I was desiring of God. I, I, there was no definition. It's just like, I know I need this, I know I want this, and God, okay, I want you. So then he gave definition to what it was I was desiring. And that is found in the next two scriptures, Ephesians 5, 1 through 2. Therefore be imitators of God. This is kind of flowing, all right? In Ephesians, I encourage you to read Ephesians. Uh, God had me read through Ephesians, the whole book. Um but if you read it enough, you'll see what God is trying to say. So I just pulled out periodic scriptures that kind of bring home the point. So therefore, be imitators of God be beloved, as beloved children and walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. Okay. Next one, Ephesians 6.10. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Okay. What God was showing me is that we need to desire to be in Christ. In Christ. Okay? Right now we are in this building. Okay? This building is fully, fully encompassing us. There is no part of us that's outside of this building. We are in the building. Right? So what God was showing me is that I need to desire to be in Christ. Christ, fully encompassed inside of Christ. We say covered by the blood, right? Covered. That means there's physical contact. Covering, right? What is covering you? So if we look at all these, uh, these are teenagers. They, each of them have clothes on. And however they decided to put their clothes together, that gives an, an idea of who they are, what they like to do, all these things. These things are covering them and portraying something. But the reality is, is that this is a visual, but it's not a, an analogy. Okay, so it's not analogous. It's not the same as being in Christ, but this is a visual to give you an idea of being able to put it on and take it off, 
okay? Mm -hmm. Because the reality is if you are covered, I mean, no less in blood, <laughs> it's going to be hard to get that off. Mm -hmm. It's going to be really hard to get that off. So the question is, what is covering you? What do people come into contact when they see you? Because whatever it is, before I even, you know, say hi, I see something in Mr. Nate because I can see what he looks like. I can see what's covering him. I can see his clothes. Okay? It can be accurate or inaccurate. I mean, I don't know exactly. I know him better. But if I just saw him on the street, I wouldn't know exactly. So the question is, what is actually covering you? What are you inside of mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that people come into contact with first? And in order for you to interact with someone else, it's through that covering. Mm -hmm. Okay, It's surrounding you. Mm -hmm. You are in Christ. There's no interacting with you without going through Christ. There's no interacting me with me without going through Christ. Right. It's good stuff. It's good. I am in Christ. Right. So what they get is Christ first. Mm -hmm. So what you get is always going to be Christ. Mm -hmm. There is no half covering. <laughs> I mean, good luck with that. If that's what you're really, you know, thinking I can do. There's, there's no halfway it. You're either in or you're out. You're in or you're out. Unfortunately, I was out. On the outside looking in. I was on the outside looking in. And trying to interact with Christ like this from an external interaction. Like, I'm talking to you. Yeah, that's not good enough. Mm. If you're in Christ, your mind is like Christ. Mm -hmm. Your mouth is like Christ. Why? Because I'm inside of him. I walk in love. Mm -hmm. I am in love. So as I walk, I'm walking in love. We want to make it good, do good deeds, walk in love. Say loving words, walk in love. The reality is, what you got to do is get in Christ. Yeah, yeah. Who is love. Amen. And by virtue, he is love. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you're in Christ, and now you can be strong in the Lord. Yes, yeah, it's good. In the strength of his might. Amen, that's good. I can't easily take it off, off and on. If you're wishy-washy, you're not in. Right. If you're wishy, if, if one day, you know, I'm all good, and one day I'm not, the reality is you're not in. I'm not right. saying you're going to hell. I'm not saying you're right. horrible. I'm just saying you're not in yet. Right. You're not in yet and do you care that you're not in yet has your heart changed to say i want to be in i can't stand this life anymore because that's where i was I can't stand it I can't stand it i can't stand it and i know even many of you would have looked at me and said what in the world my john said what is the problem <laughs> What do you have to be upset about, is what you would say. Thank you. I can't stand this life. Why? Because it was outside of Christ. It was outside of God's perfect will for me. And although I had finances and I had clothes and things and I had all these physical things that people, I mean, you know, oh, you're beautiful. Okay, great. That means nothing absolutely nothing to me. Why? Because my only desire is that I want to be in Christ. And from there, I will go and I will do whatever God has for me to do. Amen. But who cares? What does that mean? You're going to die. This is going to go away. Mm -hmm. What does that mean to have physical things? Nothing. Right. Nothing. Nothing. Right. Until you get in Christ, you have
have nothing. <coughs> and that's what God showed me. And that's when I decided that I wanted to make a radical move. Amen. Thank you, Lord. I said, forget just, you know, oh, well, you know, I'm going to change my look. So I'm going to buy some new clothes and completely go different. I said, forget it. I'm shaving my head. Totally right. I said, I'm shaving my head. I'm dyeing my hair red and making the mohawk, whatever, right? A radical move. When will you get desperate? When will you say, I don't care about all these physical things. And I'm just going to go after. When is the actual, when we say change, change, it just becomes this dull word. But the reality is, is change, the molecular structure of Caterpillar changes mm. into a butterfly. Mm. The cells change to where there's no option of going back. <laughs> Man, I'm tired of being a butterfly. I liked it better as a caterpillar. <laughs> Get to eat all day and be fat. It's too much work to flap my wings all the time. <laughs> <laughs> You have to change from the inside out. Amen. Good. Mm -hmm. And the change is to get into Christ. I want to share this. I don't know where I'm at on time. It's 9.27. 9.27. We're going to listen to this song, and then we will be done. Amen. Mm -hmm. When I was going through the valley... Um, God showed me this song about a year ago now and this is when I realized that I need to be in Christ yes, go ahead and um, the play down here it's going to be a little commercial alright clip skip yeah. and then pull free all the way to over here. Perfect. Let's listen to it. Listen to the words. Oh, it came. I wonder if I'll ever find my way. I wonder if my life.
you actually did what you say you believe. Amen. Amen. Amen.